Hello everybody, this is Jan once again analyzing a game for Chess24. We are looking at the most exciting game of round number 7 of the European Individual Championship played by Livio Di Ternisipiano against Ivan Bukavshin. Livio Di Ternisipiano with the white pieces used to play for Romania for many years, the former European Individual Champion but has decided to represent Germany for, I believe, half a year, maybe a bit more now, played at the Olympiad in the German team and has tried to adjust to the German overall level by losing a lot of rating. He's come down from around 2700 to 2650. So my strategy was obviously to keep sitting here in my studio, not playing and waiting to overtake him at 2640. Doesn't seem to be working though, because he's been doing quite well so far at the European Championship. Before the game we're about to see, he's at 4.5 out of 6, very close to the leaders, half a point behind. And it was quite a game, so let's go straight to it. Nisipiano with white goes 1e4. Bukavshin, who by the way is only 19 years old, one of the biggest Russian talents, with 2622 already, plays c5, knight f3, e6, d4, takes, takes, knight c6, knight c3, and queen c7. The time honor variation, which we've seen a lot of recently, thanks to Anish Giri, but also many other players have been rediscovering this line. We see the main move from Nisipiano here, the move queen d2, going for the good old English attack. Long castles, f3, g4, and hope to crush black. Queen f3 is the move we've seen in a lot of Anish Giri games with similar plans, long castle and hope to crush black. It looks a bit more artificial. So queen d2, the main line. Bukavshin plays a more modern setup with bishop to e7 or more classical, however you want to see it, but it's been fashionable recently, tending to go knight f6 and take it from there. The main line is, or used to be, knight f6, long castles and bishop to b4. Not quite sure why I started with bishop e7 and not knight f6, but I'm guessing it does make a difference. Long castles, knight f6, f3, b5, all of this very standard stuff. King b1, another very typical Sicilian move, getting the king out of harm's way. Knight to e5, g4, and h6. There was a great predecessor. Do you say that for games? I don't know. It was a game between Svidler and Karana played <clears throat> between Karana and Svidler, I'm sorry, where b4 was played and after knight a4 black went h6, which could transpose to our game quite easily because of many lines. Black will have to go b4, but Bukavshin decided to start with h6, keeping this option in reserve. It's quite a typical idea though for black to go b4 and then d7, d5 in one go, one of the advantages of not having played d6 yet, which you would have in most other Sicilians. Nisipianu forgot his theory here. He mentioned this game with Rook g1 between Karana and Svidler at the press conference. Rook g1 here probably would have transposed to that game, which became pretty crazy pretty quickly. This is it. Bishop f4, d takes e, g5 takes, rook takes g5, knight f d7, rook takes g7, bishop f6, no sorry, e takes f3, and here Karana blitzed out the move, knight takes e6, f takes e6, bishop to d3, in Tal style or in Houdini style, however you want to see it, but this seemed to be quite dangerous for black and Karana went on to win that game. Nisipianu, well, wasn't exactly sure and he said at the press conference that he was by himself here and came up with a new move, queen to g2, which has not been played. Quite a multi-purpose move, preparing g5, looking towards the rook at, <coughs> sorry, on a8 and also defending his own rook on h1, therefore, thereby, <laughs> I can't speak today, sorry, thereby preparing h4 and g5. So queen g2 removes this queen from the center and might be a little slow. So Bukavshin asks the very principal question, how do you want to react to my typical idea of b4 and d5 blowing open the center? Not on a4, well it's nice on one hand, 
keeping these squares under control can also become a target very, very quickly if black gets one more move with bishop to d7. So white is obliged to hurry here. e takes d5 does not get the job done. Knight takes d5, let's say bishop c1, bishop d7. And white is already in serious trouble. So Nisipanu had to come up with something better, and he did. He went for the move f4, setting the board on fire, sacrificing this pawn, but trying to keep the initiative. As he admitted, he didn't really trust himself here, and he offered a draw with f4. But Bukavshin felt he had a good position, or didn't feel like making a draw. Went for the move, knight e takes g4. Obvious enough, grabbing the pawn and attacking the bishop. See how Piano played bishop to c1, but he had an even more cunning alternative, which he considered and rightly rejected. The move e5 looks to be losing a lot of material after knight takes e3, queen takes g7, rook to g8, but white has a very cute little trick here. Move e takes f6, giving up the queen, after rook g7, f g7, this pawn cannot be stopped from becoming a new queen. Even this position might not be very good for white. After knight takes d1, g8, queen, bishop f8. Black seems to be doing okay. However, black can play even more precise by not even going rook g8, but rook f8 instead. e takes f6, bishop d6. And the fun is kind of over for white. So, rightly, e5 was not played. Still, it was a nice little line I thought I should share with you guys. Said bishop to c1 was played. And now we can see the white idea is to pick up this knight. White is threatening h3, and it's not so easy to generate a retreat square for that knight. The computer and also Nisipiano at the press conference are giving the move knight takes e4. If you can't save it, just give it up. Queen takes g4. And here, either bishop d7 targeting this knight, trying to win the material back, which would lead to a huge mess after f5, when I have no idea who's better and why. It's one of these positions which I, I'm just not comfortable with. It's too much going on. Like, I have no idea how to evaluate it. Would be a mess. The computer gives the even more cunning bishop to f6, not trying to regain the piece immediately, but first defending this pawn on g7, threatening bishop d7, threatening knight f2, threatening e5, and it turns out that black is alright here. So that would have been one way to play, but it's easier said than done to just give up this knight on g4, and Bukavshin decided to save it by playing e5, ensuring this bishop covers the knight, f takes e5, this is the best move, knight takes e4. Now white didn't want to give up the initiative and went for the move e6, which is the first move that comes to mind, separating this bishop from his knight. However, that costs material after knight gf2 and the board will be on fire very soon. Once again, the computer says bishop d3 was a better choice and he actually likes white here, implying that e5 probably was not such a good idea for black. But e6 here is the move you kind of play as a human once you got this position. Knight gf2. And here is where things get really, really messy. Spiano chose queen takes g7, which first side looks winning, attacks the rook on h8 and attacks the pawn on f7. Second side it looks losing, because black has to move bishop f6, covering that, that rook, covering that pawn, and still keeping this fork in place. So what can white do? Then at third side, I'm not sure if that's storyline, <laughs> going anywhere. But Nisipiano had anticipated all this and had seen the move knight to b5, which looks like it's once again turning the tables and is an amazing move in its own right. Like everything is hanging and you put another piece on priest and it seems to work. Point is black can't take it because after a b bishop b5, if king e7, there's queen takes f7 with a winning position. While if king d8, there is rook takes d5 check also with a winning position. So can't take it, and you can't also go anywhere with a queen. If it leaves the 7th rank, this pawn is falling, and if it goes to e7, there is e takes f7, queen takes f7, and thanks to white's queen from afar controlling the c7 square, now white is winning with knight c7 check. 
So not an easy choice for black. He has two moves. The first that comes to mind after rejecting the others. Bishop takes g7. But then once again white is better after knight takes c7 check. I'd say king f8, bishop to g2 or bishop to d3. Turns out that white is in time to cover all his material and emerge with a good position. Don't ask me for details because I don't really know. But what Nisipianu missed and what is a pretty amazing move by itself is the next move black played in the game. A little kamikaze queen sacrifice. The queen knows it's gonna get taken anyway so it decides why not take a pawn before I disappear from the board. And that's what happens. Queen takes c2, check. King takes c2, bishop takes g7. And now after knight c7 check we get the same position as in the last line but with an extra pawn for black which is enough to keep the game balanced. Here king f8 was very possible not allowing this pawn to be taken with check when once again after bishop d3 or bishop g2 position is probably roughly equal. But Bukashin played the move king e7 which is even more ambitious. Now these bishop moves let's say bishop g2 wouldn't work because black goes bishop takes e6 connecting his rooks with a winning position. And knight takes a8 also would not be a very good move since black goes knight takes d1. Knight h1 is also good but it's even stronger. White can't recapture because of knight f2 check. And once again white is not in time to get anything going and is just lost here. However the problem with king e7 is knight takes d5 check is the correct move and was played. It is check now with the king here. King takes e6 this was the idea. Bishop to g2. What can white do? He has to develop some pieces at some point. It turns out that black is still not in time to grab any material. Let's say knight takes d1. Rook takes d1 and the double threat of knight c7 and bishop takes e4 ensures that white is doing quite all right here. So instead the move bishop to e5 was played just covering the c7 square eliminating that threat. Computer gives the move bishop to b7 once again ignoring everything and developing which it evaluates as equal but not an easy move to play bishop to b7. Bishop e5 not a mistake by any stretch of the imagination covering that square as well. Rook h1 some eternal rules are still holding true. Put your pieces in the center even if the position is a total mess. And it still is a total mess. I can barely keep count of the material. I think at the moment white is a pawn down. But it's really more about activity and consolidating, developing the pieces. Rook g1 once again makes sure white is not losing in exchange. Because knight takes d1, rook takes e4 this time around. Seems to work quite well for white. If knight f2 the rook would just retreat and now all of a sudden knight c7 is a threat again thanks to this pin when white would emerge with a good position. So black is not in time to grab anything but he is in time to consolidate or it looks like he's consolidating. He plays f5 defending this knight. It seems like his construction now is very solid with everything under control. No good checks for white. Still a pawn up and development with bishop b7 to follow. However, Nispiano found another amazing move to keep his initiative going. And this is the move knight to c5 check. He's willing to part with the whole knight in order to distract this guy. And after knight takes c5 go knight f4 check, king f6 and knight h5 check. Or bishop takes a8 even. But that doesn't lead to an advantage after knight takes d1. However, it turns out knight h5 check also doesn't lead to an advantage because black could just return king e6. And it seems like white doesn't have anything better than repeating moves here which would have led to quite a logical conclusion of a pretty fun game at this point. However, <coughs> probably Bukavshin was afraid of bishop d5 check when you have to go king d6 stepping into another discover check. But it turns out that white is not really in a position to use this. Bishop a8, knight takes d1 and black is alright. Well rook d2 looks quite scary as well. But once again black somehow manages to stick around with some amazing moves like bishop to e6, bishop to takes a8, knight fd3. This of course is strictly computer but it works. 
more human approach might be to just go rook b8 here when also it looks like white has nothing better than a draw. So plenty of chaos on the board, but after knight c5 check, Bukavshin decided not to take on c5, but go king f7, which I believe is a mistake, not so much theoretically, but more practically. The position is probably still equal, more or less, but now it's much, much easier to play with white. Knight takes e4, knight takes e4, bishop takes e4, f takes e, rook takes e4, exploiting the fact that bishop f5 pinning is not really pinning because there's a counter pin rook f1 when once again white is in pretty good shape. Instead rook e8 was played now with a draw offer Bukavshin returning the favor but Nispiano so no reason to accept that since the risk had kind of gone and his position is quite easy to play now. Rook f1 check, king g6, knight f4 check and this is the last well, not really turning point, the game is already turned, but the last chance for black to get the game to its logical conclusion, which as often in crazy games is a draw, but it was very hard to find here with limited time to play the move king h7. Problem with this move is it looks like it's losing on the spot after knight d3, this bishop is pinned and it can't move, but black is just in time to unpin himself with bishop h3, once again tactics meeting this attack with a counter-attack against the rook. If rook e1, rook f e1 there is. Rook e c8 check, the rook unpins with check, next move this bishop goes somewhere and black is all right. So that was the last, well the last good chance I would say to keep the game equal after knight f4 check. Said bishop takes f4 was played, still not terrible, it's based on the trick that rook takes e8 doesn't work because of bishop f5 check followed by rook takes e8, but white is not forced to do that, instead he goes rook e takes f4. Material is still equal, but we can see the white pieces are a bit more harmonious and the black king is quite weak. Rook f6 check is coming, rook g1 check is coming, this pawn is hanging. This position is extremely unpleasant to defend for black. Bishop h3, rook g1, king h5, we see this king is not a happy camper the edge of the board, rook takes b4, white is a pawn up now temporarily after rook e2, king b3, rook f8, this pawn will drop, rook g3, rook h2, but this position just can't be defended, rook b6 is the problem, attacking both black pawns again and the combination of the mating threats and the weak pawns make this position probably a winning one for white, even though you might be able to hang around here a bit longer or defend. It's not a lot of fun. Rook h8 was played and after rook takes a6, white has these two passed pawns, is a pawn up and he still has the initiative play against the black king. Ispiano's play in the following part was not flawless and black got some chances but never really a chance to save the game and in order to <coughs> save you guys the not very entertaining experience of me talking you through the next 33 moves. I will limit myself to the final position which occurred here and shows that white did pretty well converting these two pawns and pushing them to b7 and a7. This is the position which Bukavshin resigned because the a pawn is bound to become a queen. That means that in the tournament Dieter, Livio Dieter Nispiano, we call him Dieter, not quite sure why, manages to join the leaders on five and a half out of seven. There's a bunch of guys leading now. I'll have a look if I can find the standing somewhere. One second. Let's see if this works. Here we go. We can see there's Korobov, Nepomneshi, Motilyov, Sargisyan, Volokitin, all well-known strong players. David Howell, Teus Bartel. Ivan Popov and Nisipianu all on five and a half out of seven. Still quite some play left, four rounds to go in the European Individual Championship. I mentioned this in earlier videos. Both guys are not so much in it to win it, but in it to end among the first 23 which qualify for the World Cup, which is a bigger tournament than the European Individual under the current structure. 
Anyway, we'll keep you posted if there's exciting games. Thank you for watching this video. Subscribe to the channel. Check out chess24.com. Do all the good things and we'll see you back here shortly. Thanks for watching. Bye.